Welcome back, everyone. Today, we have Oksana Romanyuk with us, and she is the founder and CEO of Remote Rockstars. Uh, she offers high-end online business management and professional virtual assistant services to visionary entrepreneurs, industry experts, and coaches. Oksana works with her homegrown team of Rockstar account managers and VAs, helping entrepreneurs systematize and grow their businesses. She is a certified online business manager and a proud member of the International Association of Online Business Managers and Association of Virtual Assistants. She's trained countless VAs and has helped multiple entrepreneurs grow their businesses, reach more people, and impact the world. Girl, you are in the right place. Those, those are all our keywords. You are talking to us today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hannah. What a great introduction. So happy to be here. Yeah, most definitely. And, and remind us, where in the world are you working remote from right now? I'm actually in Austin, Texas these days. In the beginning of next year, we're planning to move back to Washington, D.C., and I kind of consider that DMV area my home base. So it's good to be back within that international community and yeah. where we already have our family and um, friend base. So it's, uh, it's good to experience Texas. Oh, my gosh, the weather here is just gorgeous all oh, nice. year long. And with D.C., there's definitely a little bit of winter there, which, you know, me yeah. coming from Russia, I probably should be like, oh, my gosh, you should be good. And no, I'm not a fan of the cold times. <laughs> I totally relate. I grew up in the Midwest and I just want to be on the beach. California is doing fine for now during quarantine. Yeah. I'm doing the California thing. Um, but it's so great to be able to run these online businesses that we can take, you know, with us in whatever season um, of life we're in. So tell me a little bit about what inspired you to, to, to really dive into this online business space. Did you grow up in Russia, always dreaming of, of being an online entrepreneur, or how did this come about? <laughs> well, what we just mentioned here about being a little bit of a digital nomads or being location independent is absolutely the reason why I decided to start working in the online and digital space. And while growing up in Russia, to be completely honest, at around 16, I always knew that um, I had like this really firm idea that I was going to be a business owner. I wasn't sure exactly at that time what that would look like or when that would be the reality. And you know what? Dream life is real life. So that's exactly the, the name of the podcast. And that's what happened um, a couple of, or I guess like about a decade later, once I started working. And you know, to be completely honest, the service-based industry and just that service component has always been part of my career life in all the different types of work that I work and jobs that I've performed and taking care of people nurturing and creating like a warm community and just a warm family of clients now and our team members that's just kind of like part of my personality it really is like that nurturing aspect and um so that's what i'm so happy and passionate happy about and passionate to do right now where we have an amazing family of clients that we support they're passionate entrepreneurs and we stand behind that passion and it's truly mm -hmm. an honor and privilege mm -hmm to be supporting them in that space. And then with the team of our account managers and virtual assistants, it's again, it's truly an impact and an honor to be helping yeah. them in their professional growth too. Yeah. And uh, so that's actually the word of our 2020 year of elevate. Mm -hmm. And it goes into different areas of our lives, like from the professional to the personal development. And uh, yeah. that's what we are doing this year is just kind of like elevating each other in all ways possible. Oh, I love that so much. And I firmly believe that entrepreneurship and having your own business is the best course in personal development, right? Because to elevate your business or your clients, like you have to elevate as a human being as well. Um, and I think that's what drew me to entrepreneurship. I didn't, I didn't grow up being like, I'm going to own a business. I was like, I'm going to have a retirement plan in a Toyota Corolla. Like I, I didn't have that kind of insight when I was 16. Um, but definitely what drew me is what you're talking about. Like that ripple effect of you can stand in your greatness and allow others to do the same by mentoring them or by hiring them as a, as a team member. Um, and so another piece that I'm, I'm hearing here is that you keep people in their zone of genius. 
right? So, and like what I love doing is like taking the marketing side of thing from coaches because they signed up to like change the world and transform lives, not like write Instagram posts. Um, would you, would you speak to that a little bit? Like, how do you see yourself, you know, empowering your clients, um, to be in their zone of genius and how does that relate to sort of your mission? Our relationships with clients are so different in a sense that, yes, we do actually figure out this very intricate and I feel like delicate dynamics when it comes to the systems and the business workflows, because every client is different and mm -hmm. their zone, zone of geniuses is always also different. And so some of our clients actually really enjoy working on their content, their yeah. writers, and this is something that comes natural to them. And then some of our clients just love working on their graphic uh, graphics and creating those designs and maybe spending countless hours in Canva, which is, you know, part of their creative process. And we definitely put ourselves or like we insert ourselves in naturally and delicately into whatever they already enjoy doing. And then we cover those blind spots or maybe some areas of weakness where we can step in with our technical knowledge or with That's our huge. way way of running and operating back end, right? Or maybe with our mindful and gentle approach to their customer service. So all of those areas we can definitely cover. Mm -hmm. And it's always a really nice, um, I feel like in the first 90 days, a really nice time, that like fruitful time when we are setting up those processes and workflows and uh, that di working out that dynamic so that we can be a really nice and professional complement to the yes. business. So, I want to, yeah. I want to dig into those like systems and like exactly how that works. We're going to get to the operations and the steps in a moment, but I think what you just said is really important. Um, because when I first started as a solopreneur, I was like, I'm going to do all the things. Like I'm going to do my website. I'm going to do my sales calls. I'm going to do my coaching. I'm going to do my graphics. And like, there was a lot of pride in that, right? It was like my baby. Like I created mm -hmm. this whole thing. And then I was at a conference and it was starting to get to the point where I was like, okay, this is not going to be scalable. This is not, I don't want to live my life like this forever, you know, doing all the things. Um, and I, I met the person I ended up hiring as my first team member. And the reason why I hired her and brought her on board is because I literally said to her, you have the other side of my brain. Like I have the like creative and like energetic and, you know, I like writing content and being, you know, the, the visionary, but mm -hmm. she was like SEO and analytics and tracking and putting in, you know, automated systems. And I was like, I need that, but I don't need, like, I, I don't need to like transplant my brain. I just need you to come into the business. And, yep. and there's a lot of, like I said, pride wrapped up in that for people, I think, where it's like, you think you can be the best at everything, mm -hmm. but let me just say listeners, like, you're not the best. <laughs> like, you're, you're the best at something. Like you have a zone of genius and it's not sales and content and marketing and systems and coaching. So I think it's important for people to, you know, have that perspective, lean into their zone of genius and then find people like Oxana or my Dawn who does my SEO um, mm -hmm. to balance you out because there, there's enough, there's enough to go around for everyone. You don't have to try to do it all. Right. Absolutely. And not to sound like a broken record or cheesy here by saying that we the love the cheese, short. bring it on. Yes. So life is short and why spend it on tasks in your business that just simply do not bring you joy. And so my bigger kind of part of our mission, I feel like as a, as a team and just like us remote rockstars as a company is we live, we live a life of contribution. And so by kind of just like keeping that in our forefront or like in our mind, we then ask ourselves the questions, how do we show up in the world every day? And what is it that we do? And how do we support our clients that creates that long lasting impact? And not only on them, mind you, it's not usually just their business. It's also their communities that they're building. It's their coaching clients if, that, if they have the coach, coaching practice. Maybe if they're in a different like product sales type of uh, business, then it's also the community of their customers, right? And who enjoy their product and who are using whatever they, they produce and maybe other services that they offer. But it's basically, again, like you mentioned earlier, that ripple effect. It's not only the impact that we're creating, it's also the impact that we're helping our clients to multiply and expand and um, basically four to five kind of like with their, within their communities. And that's what, that's, what's important to us. And so how do we show up in the world every day? Because sometimes whether we realize it or not, we do actually impact people, 
maybe it's invisible, maybe it's very delicate, maybe it's something that they don't speak about, but then just one word or something like a sentence in your live video or something that you do during the day can create a huge impact on another person's life because we never know at what season of life, right? Like, or where we meet them in life or mm -hmm. how we come across on the other part of, on the other side of the screen or the webcam. And so, we just we just either consciously unconsciously but we do create that impact and so what kind of energy are we emanating then right so like what kind of energy are we sending into the world if we just stop and think about that part of our life where it's not necessarily our life it, it belongs to the people whose paths we cross so it, it yeah. does become a life of contribution Absolutely. Yeah. That ripple effect. And I love what you said. There's so much we can dig into, but I do want to make sure that we get to systems. I promise team, we're going to get there. Um, but something you said about being able to like duplicate and scale yourself, like you said, like that, you, like you, you got to follow your joy and like be your mm -hmm. person. So talk to us about how you take a service provider or a solopreneur, someone who's on this big mission and help mm -hmm. them, you know, emanate, like you said, right. But what are some of the steps to help them really make that happen? And you know, Hannah, what you mentioned earlier, as far as I feel like every solopreneur or every business owner at a, at some point arrives at a point in their business when they're noticing that, well, this is just not sustainable anymore, or they have to make a decision whether I keep my business on an intimate side. I love my community. I love my set of clients and I'm happy with that. Or if I want to create more impact and if I want expansion, then maybe revenue growth too. Then I start considering having virtual professionals join the team. And that's when yeah. we come in. And that's actually something that we also help our clients to kind of like arrive to that decision and offer a little bit of a critical look. What does your business actually look like from the inside? And that's the first 90 days mm -hmm. of our engagement with every client. It's that 90 days of audit and kind of like, again, like offering a little bit of like the feedback of how does your systems run? Uh, how do your systems run? How does your process, like what does your process actually look like, right? So we start yeah. from the very beginning as far as, for instance, as simple as email management. So we go through the inbox, we in, uh, insert filters, we set up the, the inbox. And again, just to simplify the life and just to make sure that it's under control. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. 5,000 emails in the inbox that are unread is just a huge red flag to us. And it's, Oh my gosh, it would just give, it would bother me every day. Yeah. So then we, well, and I we think dive. another important piece of, of this before we get too much into the granular is yes, taking a look at where you're at, but also where you want to go. And I mm -hmm. think you, you slightly touched on this, like having a clear vision of like, what is the business and the lifestyle you're working towards? your dream life. Okay. Not what Susie's doing on Instagram, not what your grandma thinks, not what, you know, the, the coach you used to work for, or, you know, work with tells you, but really having that clarity, because I'm definitely someone who's swung between the like achievement entrepreneur and the lifestyle entrepreneur, right? Achievement being like those numbers, that revenue, like the more and more and more growth, the more people, the more team members that you can hit, or like, the more leisure and the more free time. And, you mm -hmm. know, everyone has that price of freedom, right? How much they need to earn to have that sort of flexible digital nomad beach life, whatever. Um, but do you work on that at all? And I'm, I'm curious if you do how you help people decipher like where they're going. Cause you can just like get more clients and have less emails and hustle, hustle, mm -hmm. hustle, but that's right. not always where people want to go. So how do you navigate that, that vision with people? Such a great question because that's actually part of our unique value proposition with remote rock stars. And I feel like that's what differentiates our model of work with clients from other companies is because we don't all, would not only execute and implement everything that the client wants to set up in their business or to improve. We also offer strategy sessions and those sessions usually come in quarterly. So where we create that 90 day plan and that's the beauty of working with our company that we not only refine that vision and maybe look at six months and a year from now, but we also then go ahead and implement it because we have the team that stands behind um, ex executing that vision. And so that's the beautiful part of it. But what we focus on and to kind of speak a little bit to your point about like the revenue growth, right? Like just the, the growth of the business period is that we always look at the income generating activities first 
and those IPAs is always our focus in the first 90 days. And that's where the audit of the systems comes in. We offer solutions how to consolidate some of the tools and use some of other platforms to the maximum of their ability where some of our clients are not even aware of that are included. But it's just like, why are you using Flowdesk if you have Kajabi? Right, redundant. So just little um, details like that. And so then we look at the client onboarding journey. So what does the actual client journey look like? Is the, the red carpet experience, is that something that will keep generating those clients coming back and um, also coming in being basically fascinated with the way how you roll out that carpet for them? So that's a huge part of the coaching practice too, right? Um, so leaving that first lasting impression that will have people come back. So those are like the primary kind of like areas of focus for us in the beginning. And then of course we dive into the sales funnels and see if there's anything broken. Oh, again, like if there are any improvements, if there are any missing links. And so that's not only the client facing side that I'm talking about, but the back end side here that we are reviewing as well. Got it. Okay. So just to recap. So first, first step is to really take a step back, zoom out, look at where you are now and how different is that from where you want to be, what the dreamline exactly. vision is. Um, and then you start to do just some um, admin things. Like you said, cleaning up schedules or emails, mm -hmm. um, making sure that you have just a, a clean slate. Would you say is that next step? Exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then you start to move into more of the like sales, sales process. Exactly. Those income producing activities. That's something that we definitely always focus on. And just to make sure that nothing is broken, everything mm -hmm. works. And what is actually the most direct path to generating that income and what is the most effective um, and st strategy. For instance, sometimes we go into Calendly and we see if a free 15 minute call and then a $77 strategy call, which actually generates income and is more popular. So then why are you wasting your time on a 15 minute free call? Yeah. That's yeah. not a fair energy exchange. Yeah. And I think that the outside eyes are so important at any stage of business because you like myself too, like you get into the system and like, this is the one way to do it. This is my offer. This is my link. And then have someone come in and be like, Oh, this could be just one click. This could be a, a completely, you know, easier system that that's really powerful. And I'm curious, you mentioned, you know, sometimes you see, you know, you're, you might be cannibalizing an offer, um, like a $77 call, like you said, I see this a lot with coaches who have like high ticket transformational coaching programs. But then they also have this like $200 course or this like $10 ebook. Um, what recommendation do you give people when it comes to cleaning up their offers? And like you said, really focusing on the most profitable activities. To be completely honest, um, Hannah, I feel like that's why you have Dawn on your team. Numbers don't lie. We look at the historical data and we actually analyze that whole client journey, right? Like that sales funnel. And we take a look from the very first low ticket, maybe free offer, freebie to the highest item on that, uh, in that sequence. And then we evaluate based on the numbers and the popularity and the demand, what actually generates and brings income. So then we make a suggestion and a recommendation to either eliminate, consolidate, or offer as a bonus or a, a, an upsell which is pretty awesome always to just like have something a little extra. And then for the higher ticket offers, we always also suggest to have a little bit of like a personalized element, whatever bonus that could look like for, uh, for that coach, for that practice. Again, I feel like with the age of social media and there's so many online courses and programs these days that sometimes that evergreen model just makes it really impersonal. So with other, our recommendations for marketing strategies, it's always keeping that element of personal attention in mind because ultimately that intimate connection with your audience, that's what's gonna keep generating income and creating the loyalty fan base. Yeah, I guess the numbers don't lie, right? No. All data, no drama. Awesome. So um, is, is there anything else then, you know, you look into sales, but what else kind of happens in those first 90 days? So what I would, what I would just wanted to say is that in our systems audit, what is really important for us to is just always reevaluate all the tools that businesses are using and where they, again, like the blind spots are with the systems. What I have to say is that part of the 
kind of the boring process of auditing and systematizing uh, someone's business is that uh, creating standard operating procedures, documenting all the processes that create your business. And the thing is that it doesn't matter if Remote Rockstars supports you as a business or anyone else comes in as a virtual professional, like you know, that knowledgeable or expert on your team. It's important to have those standard operating procedures. I know it might sound super boring. It's important to have those documented processes as part of your business operations, yeah. where no matter who handles the process, they know exactly what to do and they're set up for success. Yeah, totally. Something I talk to clients a lot about is um, the dreamer versus the pragmatist mindset. Um, because a lot of folks start out with just, you know, good vibes and intention and they just like manifest these opportunities, but like manifestation is not always reliable, predictable, or consistent. And so mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about how to help folks. Cause we always um, tend to lean to be either more of a dreamer, right? Like I'm going to yeah. have a million dollars next month because I'm going to call it in in my meditation tonight. And then the pragmatist who's like, why would you ever quit a nine to five until you have this much saved, you know? So it's about connecting those two trains and I know dreamer and pragmatist and I know SOP standard operating procedures are so important to connect. Yes. Like this is how we actually do it. And then connect that to your good energy and pull yourself forward, um, in a mission yes. driven business. I totally support that. And you know, Hannah, it actually falls into this small formula where awareness or um, law of attraction, manifestation, coupled with action equals transformation. So I feel like it's not only enough to be, uh, for us to be aware and to know that something maybe needs improvement or we need a little bit uh, to work on certain traits, personality, whatever, like some areas in our business. And it's not only enough to just in our meditations to call in through visualization or uh, something else that works for us to call in whatever we desire. I feel like taking that a step further and actually applying some action to it, that's what will create that powerful transformation, be it in your personal or business life. And so using formula, it's actually really helpful in, in my personal and business life. And I always remind our clients too. So um, awareness is just, I feel like not enough. We have to couple it up with action. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Totally feel you. I know I should drink more water, but if I never do it, then you're still dehydrated. So huge. I love that. Thank you. One of the last questions or topics I want to explore with you, specifically thinking about VAs, because a lot of people um, that I work with are hesitant to hire a VA because, again, they have that ego. It's my baby. They can't do it better than I do it. So where do you recommend people start when it comes to delegating? So with delegation, yes, there are a lot of fears that are involved here, right? Like, what if they mess up and my customers or my clients see that that email is just looks terrible? Uh, what if they're not quality conscious, right? Uh, what if they miss deadlines? So there are a lot of fears that are associated with these processes, and that's something that we actually help our clients overcome, too, when they start working with us. And I would say always having some type of an assessment test, maybe as a trial for about three to five days, you're sending them tasks that you generally would perform yourself. You use the Loom or VDR to record a quick instruction of what your expectation is and what you would like the end product to look like, and then leave it up to them as far as their expediency and the turnaround and the quality of their end result to show them off their expertise, to show off to show you off their expertise. So basically leaving that door open for them. And so a trial week is always super, I feel like helpful. And those assessments is something that we use with our potential team members too. We just have them run through some social media tasks, email management tasks, calendar management. We even have a video recording task. So um, some of these important areas that really pertain to your business, just make a short list of what you actually do on the daily and assign some of these tasks to your potential VA and see how they do. And discuss with them the terms of this trial week so that they're aware that they're being tested. And um, so that would be my number one suggestion. And then another, once you actually approve their work and you and you like and you start working with them you like their work you start working with them so start basically filming all of your training sessions with your va from day one because that will be part of your standard operating procedure yeah. and yeah. then that will um that will give your va a directive from day one i'm starting to document all the processes even if it's part of the training yeah 
Yeah. Okay. I love that. Step one in delegating is list out what you do on the daily and pull out what you don't need to do. You don't want to do. It doesn't really bring you joy anymore. Um, and then find someone who can give it a go, right? Like you're not like hiring and like paying for this person's healthcare and benefits on day one, right? Like you're getting someone in testing the waters and seeing, you know, if there's someone that can take over that task for you and record, record, record. Yes. Yeah. So good. So good. Amazing. This is huge. And I think so many solopreneurs need these reminders that there is help out there. There are ways to scale that feel good. It's not just pouring money into Facebook ads. <laughs> it's sometimes working smarter, not harder. So, so much good stuff for um, folks to chew on, to, you know, take, take with them here. But if they want to continue the conversation and learn more about you and remote rock stars, uh, where can they go? You guys can always reach out to us through our website, remoterockstars.com, on Facebook and on Instagram. We have our Remote Rockstars business pages and our biggest community is on Facebook, Remote Rockstars Club, where we not only offer professional trainings to our virtual professionals in our community, but we also help business owners find amazing virtual team members that make them happy to help their business forward. What a sweet all, all good, all good opportunities there. Um, thank you so much, Oksana and the remote rock stars team. I, I really enjoyed connecting with you and listeners. I will be back next week with more inspiration and strategy to help you make your dream life, your real life.